Hi, my name is Konstantin Baum. I'm a master of wine and today I'm going to answer one of the oldest questions in the world. Which wine matches best with a beautiful piece of meat? I have this little T-bone steak here and I consulted the wine app Vivino in order to find the best wine matches with beef. I received a wide variety of suggestions and I'm going to taste test which ones match best. Sounds like a tough job, but somebody's got to do it. Before we get into the session, I just want to say thank you for all of your subscribes, likes and comments. They are greatly appreciated and are very motivating. But now let's talk about the basic rules behind food and wine matching. The first thing you need to understand is why there are some do's and some don'ts. The only thing that really matters is whether you are having a good time with your match. Sometimes I pick a wine for dinner because I want to drink that wine on that evening and if the meal doesn't perfectly match, that's fine too. I still have a great bottle and a great plate right in front of me. That said, in order to find great matches, you need to follow some basic rules and we will go through some of those rules today. The most important rule for me is that the wine should give the food something it needs and vice versa. A piece of meat might taste great, but it doesn't taste acidic or bitter and a red wine might add those dimensions to your sensory experience. I'm therefore not looking for similarities between the wine and the food. I'm looking for opposites that attract. In order to find these wines, I went on Vivino because many of you use the app and I search for internationally available affordable wines that are according to Vivino a great match with beef. The results were a bit of a mixed bag but I'm looking forward to find out which wine is the best match with that t-bone steak but first of all I have to cook that steak. What? Yes. First of all, I gotta say, if this whole master of wine thing doesn't work out, I could still be a fairly decent line cook. The first wine is the White Acoustic, a wine from Monsant in Spain, a region where there are some great white wines coming from. And I'm looking forward to trying this, even though white wine obviously isn't the most obvious choice when it comes to red rare beef. Normally you would rather go for red wine because of the power and concentration of the meat flavors. But if you have a powerful and concentrated white wine, that could work too, so let's try it. This is indeed a powerful white wine with lots of concentration and body. There's quite a lot of oak there as well because the wine was fermented in French oak barriques, but there's also some citrus freshness there. The alcohol is high, but there's also good acidity. And this is also because of white Grenache, which can produce really structured, beautiful wines in Spain. I'm a big fan of this grape variety. Even though it's powerful, it often also has great freshness and vibrancy. So I'm going to try the first piece of meat and I'm going to see whether it works with the wine. If it doesn't, that's fine because this meat looks delicious. So you know what? This wine is actually so powerful that it even overpowers the meat a little bit. I have quite a lot of astringency and aggressiveness in the mouth with this wine. So I'm not a big fan of the match, even though it isn't too shy, it doesn't kind of fall apart when the meat is there as well. It just doesn't match right. Even though I would have liked to see the white wine match well with the beef, I gotta say this is a bit of a fail. They just don't really sink and therefore I gotta say no thank you. The next wine is a wine that Leon picked and it's a bit of an interesting wine from Alto Adige in Italy. The winery is called Pranzek and the cuvee is La Graine and Vernatsch. And it's very light in color and very light in alcohol as well with 11% of alcohol. This could actually work quite well with the beef because of its freshness and vibrancy and this wine might give the meat a little bit more freshness as well. Yeah, this is a really fresh and vibrant wine with lots of fruit flavors coming through. There's red currants, cherries, a little bit of raspberries as well coming through. On the palate, it's lively, fresh and very light. The only issue I can see here is that the beef might be too strong, too flavorful. I still love my job. So this is really nice. The wine matches the food. It doesn't overpower the meal. The meal doesn't overpower the wine. I think if you have like a very dark and concentrated sauce with the beef, then this would probably be too much for this little wine. But in this case, it works molto bene. So I would give this a thumbs up. So now we're looking at the more classic matches. This is a Cross Hermitage from the Northern Rhone. So it's a Syrah. And this could be a really nice match. Syrah is often used with meat, oftentimes served with lamb, but you can also serve it with like pigeon, game, 
wild boar and these kinds of dishes. So let's see whether it works with the T-bone steak. This is a really classic Syrah. It smells of blueberries, but also cherries. It's quite concentrated and rich. There are also black olive notes coming through and obviously a little bit of pepperiness, which is quite typical for the grape variety. On the palate, there's body, there's structure. It's not the biggest wine in the world, but it has some tannins and some rough edges. And the meat or the protein in the meat might be really useful to polish off those tannins. Tannins react with the proteins in your mouth. And if you add a little bit of meat, you have more proteins against the same amount of tannins and you therefore have less astringency on your palate. So that can really help to make the sensation of eating and drinking more pleasurable. Yeah, the wine actually feels less rough, which is a good thing. I think actually that this wine might be a little bit too powerful for the meat. I think if you have a really dark and concentrated sauce, this will give the meal more power and therefore the wine will seem less overpowering. But in this case, I actually think this is a bit too edgy. So it's not a fail, but it's also not the greatest match so far. So I would rate this like this. The next one is the Black Stallion Cabernet Sauvignon from Napa Valley. And this is also a really good deal if you're searching for affordable wines from Napa. It's a concentrated and rich wine, but it's really well made. So let's taste it. It actually has a very complex flavor composition. So you have cassis flavors there, so concentrated ripe fruit, but you also got a little bit of greenness, a little bit of herbaceousness there. You also have the oak influence because the wine is still fairly young, but it's very complex and very appealing. There's quite a lot going on in that glass. On the palate, it's bold and concentrated, but it's a little bit more polished than the Cross Hermitage that I had previously. So the tannins are a little bit more rounded, a little more mellow. This is quite nice. Let's see whether it works with the beef. This actually works really well because of the fact that the tannins are more polished. The meat doesn't get overpowered. If you'd serve a brown sauce with it, it might be an even better match, but it actually works really well like this already. So ding ding. The next wine had to be a Malbec from Argentina. When I traveled through Argentina, I realized that they eat a lot of beef and when they eat beef, they usually drink Malbec with it. So I had to include it in this tasting. This is an interesting wine because it's the El Enemigo Malbec from Mendoza in Argentina. And I tried the Chardonnay in one of my previous videos and really liked it. So I'm looking forward to tasting this wine. Man, they really know what they're doing at El Enemigo. This is very, very nice. It's quite intense and vibrant, but there's also quite a lot of structure there. So the wine smells of blackberry, a little bit of cassis. There's also some pepperiness coming through. On the palate, it's quite structured. There are grippy tannins, but also lots of freshness and body, and everything is in perfect balance. This is not a super powerful wine. It has 13.5% of alcohol, so it's not too alcoholic at all. And I really like it. And now I wanna see whether I like it as much with the beef or more or less. Let's see. Oh, I'm very excited about this match. We have a beautiful red wine and a great piece of meat. And together they're even better than when they are apart. So this is what matchmaking is all about. A beautiful, beautiful combination. And yeah, I like it, as you can tell. The last wine is a bit of an oddball, but it was suggested, so I thought I'd check it out. It's a 10-year-old Tawny from Graham's. So it's a port wine that was aged for a long time in barrel. It's alcoholic and sweet. And I have no idea whether this would work with the beef. This is very nice. I really like port wine and I don't drink enough of it. It smells of plums, a little bit of walnuts. So there are roasty notes coming through as well. On the palate, it's quite intense and concentrated. There's beautiful sweetness there, but also freshness and vibrancy and length. So this is very, very good. But yeah, I don't really see how this will work, but let's dig in. Okay, this is not the best combo, but it's definitely also not the worst. I think there's something there. If you would add some blue cheese to the dish, or if you have a concentrated and rich sauce that matches the concentration and richness of the port, then possibly you could find a way to match the wine and the beef. But 
not like this. It would be great if port wine could be matched with a dish like this. It's a great wine but it's underappreciated and if you could pour it more frequently in a restaurant setting with different dishes that would be amazing. Drink more port wine because there's so much diversity of style and a rich rich history. Just don't drink it with this. These are my top three matches and they come from three different continents are made from different grape varieties in different ways and are very different stylistically. And this goes to show that you should just experiment more and try different combinations and see what works and what doesn't. My favorite definitely was the El Enemico Malbec, a beautiful wine and a beautiful match. So I hope you enjoyed this video. If you liked it, then please like it down here. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't done so already. My question of the day is, which is your favorite wine with beef? Comment down below, let me know. And I hope I see you guys again soon. Until then, stay thirsty.